And you even talk about why, like why is flying something that was developed? My counterbiologist is very keen on the question why, by which we mean what is the Darwinian survival value? What is it about flight that helps the animal to pass on its genes, survive to pass on its genes? And there are all sorts of different reasons. I mean, looking for food, escaping from predators, um, pouncing on prey from, from above, migrating to different places to keep up with climate changes. All sorts of different reasons why flight. It's almost a question that answers itself. It seems so obvious to us that flying would be a wonderful thing to be able to do. I guess we look at how we use it, like you said, you know, the international travel and cost effectiveness. And yes. Or do we use drones for, like just to get better views of yes, things? Yes, quite, and, yes, yeah. You know. And what, what did you, what was reconfirmed about evolution in doing all of this study that, that you saw? Did you, were you reminded of certain things or were certain things surprise you about some of the evolution of some of these beings? I wouldn't say surprise because I, I'm sufficiently imbued with Darwinism now that nothing very much surprises me. I suppose there are some quite remarkable adaptations in detail, things like, um, um, well, I just mentioned hummingbirds. Sorry, I, I mentioned hoverflies, but hummingbirds do it too, um, hovering like a, like a helicopter. Um, I was very, I became very fascinated by the um, symbiotic relationship between plants and insects and birds, pollinators, because the plants need their pollen to be transported from the male flower to a female flower. And some plants do it by wind, but um, I'd speculate, wouldn't it be wonderful if plants could have a little wing chariot to carry their pollen? And they probably would have evolved, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I should have warned you, I'm liable to, ever since I had a stroke in 2016, liable to get a croaky throat. Okay, yeah, no worries. That was six years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Plants would have benefited from having a little winged chariot to carry their pollen from male flower to female flower, but why bother? Because there are butterflies and bees and, and hummingbirds and sunbirds. And so all you need to do is bribe them or um, seduce them. In the case of Colors. Um, or orchids that, that, um, that um, look like a female bee uh. or a female wasp, and the bee tries to copulate with the flower and um, gets dusted with pollen, gets ca covered with pollen, and then goes off and tries to copulate with another flower and then delivers the pollen. Um, and there are advanced versions of this, like the hammer orchid, which has a, um, there are about a dozen different species of hammer orchid in Australia. And each one of, each species has one species of wasp, which, it, which it's partnered with, so to speak. And these wasps, the male flies, the females don't have wings. The females just climb onto, the, onto a plant somewhere and the male comes and seizes the female and carries her off in his arms and mates with her on the wing. Well, these orchids have a dummy female on the end of a, a sort of arm with an elbow in the, in, the, in the flower. So the male comes along, grabs the female, tries to lift her up, and the, the elbow is, of the plant bends, and the, the male gets smashed against the... Um, place where the, where the pollen is, repeatedly bang, bang, bang like that, and gets covered with these so-called pollinia, which are great big lumps of pollen that orchids have. Finally, he gives up on the, the, the effort to make off with this dummy female, flies off, and not having learned his lesson, grabs another one, and again it goes bang, 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 and this time he delivers the pollen. That's an astonishingly detailed mechanism. There's another one called the bucket orchid, where um, there's a, a bucket filled with, the, the flower has a sort of bucket filled with fluid, filled with water. And it's got a slippery edge, so that, the, so that a male bee of a certain species only slips on the edge, falls into the water, and then swims and tries to struggle to run, and finds the only way to escape from this bucket of water, so to speak, 
is through a tiny hole. And it struggles through this hole. And on its way through, gets pollinia stuck to its back. So it flies off. And then again, sadder but not wiser. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> falls into another one and then struggles through that hole and then in this case the pollinia gets scraped off its back. Well think of the intricate detail of the device by which these flowers get themselves pollinated, seducing a particular kind of insect. In the case of figs it's even better because there are about 900 different species of fig and each one has its own private species of, of wasp, tiny little wasps. You don't, don't think of it as being like a real big ye yellow jacket. It's a little tiny wasp. And uh, the very, very complicated cycle of activity, relationship between these wasps and these, and these figs. A, f a fig is actually not a fruit at all. It's a, it's a flower. There's, there's a lot of flowers and inverted, a sort of chamber in which there are lots of flowers on the inside. And the, the, the relationship between the fig and the wasp is very, very complicated, extremely complicated. Um, and the, as I said, there are about 900 different species of fig and about 900 different species of fig wasp. And each species of fig has one species of fig wasp. So it's a real magic bullet that takes the pollen to the correct species of fig. Yeah. And that's all through evolution. All th yes, it, it, it evolves by Darwinian natural selection. The, it, it, the, the ultimate beautiful detail of these adaptations that come about through Darwinian natural selection inspires me. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.